up, Liana? Yeah. Hey, Chris. What's going on, Barb? We got the Yeah, hello, everybody. What's going on, Roger? Roger. Welcome back, Hi, Roger Blair. Yeah. So we're celebrating a one year standing stones yes. uh, on YouTube. 593 shows today. Yes, 594 flyer, counting today. 594, you guys. My flyer was wrong. Yeah. I was going by what what uh, you said. I should have. 594. Wow. 594 shows. Yeah, isn't that wild? Hardest working man on YouTube. So I'll yeah, you so we got a lot going on. So yeah, it, it, it's been crazy. That's just on YouTube. So yeah, yeah, that's, so. yes, yeah, yeah. That's true. People have to realize that because you're on how so, many platforms? So uh, fifteen platforms. Uh, we're in right now uh, 103 Facebook Lives. Tomorrow will be on 13 Audio. So, yeah, we are actually, we're, we're getting around, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we got people from Ireland. Uh, the other show uh, we was on uh, last night. They're like, hey, I'm from Ireland, mate. Uh, well, I don't, know the, I, I don't know if that's how they talk, yeah, but I'm just saying, say, right? But, okay. But, yeah, yeah, but they were chiming in from Ireland. Uh, Ireland. Of course, we have Japan, China, Korean, yes. or yep. Korea, not Korean. Yeah. But hello, Lauren. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, uh, I'll be throwing up some links, uh, that for some reason, ladies and gentlemen, that the, the stars on Facebook's not working right. So I'll throw up some links if you want to donate a dollar here and there or whatnot, but don't forget, I'll throw also some links where you can get your Facebook or your coins for, uh, Bigfoot. And also mm -hmm. I've got your coins for Skinwalker Ranch and your cryptic coins too. And don't forget your shirts. But yeah, so what we got lined up tonight? Today we have Carter Bouchard. Is that what? how you pronounce it? Yes. Yeah. yeah Bouchard. Yeah. yeah you Carter had, Bouchard. Now I know that you had done an interview for, with him. How long ago do you think that was? Like six? Was it six? Maybe uh, more about months? seven, eight months ago. Okay. Maybe eight. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah good, so outstanding big, guy, man. He's yeah, a good he author. Is. Very he's, good author. Yeah. He's, oh, fantastic. Um. Yeah, author of three books now, um, and he just has so much interesting stuff. And so um, he and I were chatting, and um, he said, yeah, you know, I, I have definitely have some more information to share. So I said, okay, well, let's have him on, because I've never I never had an opportunity to, to talk to him yet. So I'm really excited about that. He's oh, like, you're going to adore God. Kata Bouchard, welcome to the show, Carter. Come on down. How you doing there, sir? Welcome, welcome. Welcome. How are you? Good evening, sir? ladies and germs. What's going on? <laughs> oh, doing good there. How about yourself? I'm uh, stunning in spite of myself. You know, I, I just can't help it. No, I'm doing great. It's it's uh, you know it's it's rained here the last three or four days. It's cooled it off. Oh, nice. Down here in Missouri, so um, I'm having a good time. You know? well, good, good. So yeah. introduce yourself for people that do not know who you are and uh, tell us everybody uh, what you do and uh, a background yeah. on you. Okay. Uh, well, I'm Carter Bouchard. Uh, I, I am a member of BFRO, although I, I don't do reports for them anymore, but I've been with them about 12, 13, 14 years. I've lost track. Uh, I've had 100 reports published to BFRO. That's wow. actually published. And so there's a pile. And uh, I've led four expeditions for BFRO, uh, three in Missouri, one in Illinois. Uh, probably interviewed about 500 people in the last three years, 500 people or couples Whoa. with all these ex incredible experiences. And so, you know, um, uh, I started writing the books during COVID and because I would, wasn't going to be going anywhere. Couldn't go anywhere. So I started do, doing all my research. And, and the thing with, you know, BFRO, they they sanitize the reports. They don't put the paranormal or quantum things in it. They, they take it out. They just scrub it out. So I, that's why I quit doing reports for them. But the people that I talk to are, it goes like this. Well, I, I saw a Sasquatch across the road. I was driving down the highway across the road. So 50% of all uh, Sasquatch sightings are road crossing. So uh, after we do the you know, obligatory, well, this is what happened. And blah, blah, we got all the data and I, you know, ready to, to call it off. They say, uh, now, can I tell you something really weird? I said, well, okay, you're going to, you just told me about a creature that doesn't exist that you saw. And now you're going to tell me something really weird. 
bring it. And that is where all the people, hello, Aussie Sue, uh, all the people started telling me about this paranormal quantum stuff that just nobody will talk about because, you know, they get ridiculed. So they just shut up. So they start telling me about, you know, I saw it walk through a tree. It came through my house in an orb and turned into a Sasquatch holding a baby. And there's, fl I'm, I'm going, what? So I'm writing all this stuff down. I suddenly find myself after two years, I've got tons of bizarre, but real reports. Mm -hmm. And they get blown off. People blow off and ridicule people like that, you know. Uh, half of it because they don't believe in they're just mean, cruel people. The other half is your wife, uh, co-workers, family members, spouse, significant other that, you know, just give you a bunch of crap because they can. Mm -hmm. you know, I think you're kidding. Uh, but <laughs> it drives people to be quiet. Yes. And so they won't talk about it to anybody. Even a, a plain sighting, they just sh shut up. So people are starting to call me now because they got someone to talk to. Uh, there's others, of course, but I mean, they're, they have nowhere to go. And so I, once a week, I'm going to get an email. I got one today from a guy that lived in Missouri and he moved to Alabama. I haven't returned the email yet, but I will. And so it's just fantastic stuff. And it's the stuff that nobody wants to believe. I'm putting it in my books. I don't care if you don't want to buy my book. That's fine. It makes a good doorstop. I'll just pile them up against my door. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it, but it's just incredible the stuff and the people are just coming out of the woodwork. It's fantastic. And it's time that people know what's really going on. A lot of people do, but I mean, probably 10, 15% is all that we ever hear about Sasquatch reports. We hear about one of every 10. Yeah, so, that's what we've heard. Yeah. You think that, and you agree with that? Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, and, and a lot of it's because some of them are cops, pilots, uh, mm -hmm. although the stigma with maybe losing your job has fallen by the wayside right. because things mm -hmm. are a little bit more mm -hmm. open. Uh, but, yes. uh, and just people just, they, they won't, they won't talk about it because they don't want to get made fun of. Right. Yeah. It's a terrible sure. thing we do to people, you know? Yes. Anyway. So here yes. I am. I'm, I'm the woo guy, you know? And, and were you always the woo guy? Well, no, no. When I, when I got into Sasquatch research, I was brought into it and brought up by a ape only and hostile and not so nice people on top of it, as far as their belief. So if you brought up anything, you caught a bunch of crap. Mm. So I started withdrawing and not talking, you know, mm. uh, which is very unlike me. So, uh, but once uh, the first expedition I led for BFRO, uh, I was watching a heat signature go through the woods. I wasn't recording because one of our group was lost. I mean, four or five people in a group had gotten lost. We had bad radio. So uh, I was just being quiet and I was watching this heat signature. I thought, oh, finally, here they are. God, great. Okay, now we can get off and go do what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't them. It was a Sasquatch. And it walked around the corner. We were sitting there maintaining radio silence, just being quiet because we couldn't hear our radio because of the crappy service. And it took one step. The second step it took, poof, it just vanished. It's like a bright flash bulb went off. It's about 1130 at night. I'm looking through my thermal camera. I just boom. So all I could see was stars after that. But it it just vanished. It realized we were there. I'm assuming, and it just gone like a flashbulb. And I I was baptized right then and there. Because you're not going to tell me, you know, I wasn't stoned, wasn't drunk, I'm not on any psychotropic <laughs> drugs. Uh, you know, my yeah. cameras were working perfectly, and so I had no excuse to fall back on that happened. I saw it, it happen. Mm -hmm. And I, I went over to the, to the dark side that night and I've never come back. <laughs> <You know? laughs> now, the guys that brought me into this, uh, they're, we're, we're none too happy when I start talking about it and bring it up to some of the people on the, uh, all the, that didn't see it, uh, on the expedition. And they're, they're just, they're not good people. They're hateful people. And actually one of the guys was a guy I replaced because he was a, Oops. <laughs> and uh, he, when I left, oh, I quit doing expeditions. He was brought back on. He just got fired again for the same stuff. So, but anyway, so that's my, that's how I got on this track. Yeah. Of, I'm going to listen to these people. I'm not going to discount it. Like mm -hmm. I was brought up. 
to do with this this group of guys in BFRO Missouri. And so and so here I am, you know, and it's bizarre. I mean, you know, I've, some of the things I've heard and I've read, you know, they're all in the books, you know, and some of them aren't and can't be. Uh, but, you know, a guy up in Canada, he's been going through something for like 25, 30 years, him and his dad. And his dad passed away, but he's still like, every now and then. But he went through some incredible, you know, Star Trek, you know, Sasquatch wow. putting him in through the window and touching him on the forehead and knocking him out. Just stuff you hear and you go, oh, that's a bunch of hooey. That, that, that can't happen. What, no, it can. You know, it, it's quantum theory. And quantum theory, even science admits quantum theory is possible because it's why they call it theory. We theorize that these things under certain conditions can happen, you know, and changing your vibrational frequency, interdimensional, switching dimensions, going through a portal. It's all theorized by science. They just won't bring it to the forefront because uh, we're in the midst of uh, uh, an information uh, hijacking, you know, with the yes. UFOs and everything, you know. So, you know, because, you know, and, and, and we were we're taught how to think, and how, what to believe. The day you come out of the birth canal, you are taught True. how to think and see and view the world, you know, because of school, religion, your parents, your your inner circle of friends, you're all kind of flaked and formed, you know, and what they teach you in school is how to view the world and how to think, you know, and so there's no UFOs, there's no Sasquatch. Oh, wait, the government did lie. There are UFOs. Okay, so scratch that one. So uh, hopefully Sasquatch is next where they do some kind of admission. Mm -hmm. something you know dna is catching up to them they can't lie much longer yeah yeah right right yeah you know, it's getting affordable that's the only thing it's keeping us uh in the in the dark ages is you know dna uh good dna uh test runs you 800 to 1200 1500 bucks you know and you yes. can about 400 bucks now if you know the right people okay yeah but then that that evidence if it's presented well Mm -hmm. that, that can't be. No, it's a it's a uh, female hominid and an unknown hominid male donor. Mm -hmm. Right. That can't be. So we're going to discount that. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. it keeps coming yeah. back that. So that's what it is. And make so. and make up, uh, you know, kind of little information campaign to discount yeah. a, a credible, you know, a credible uh, peer reviewed, you know, it's yeah. being started yeah. to be accepted by science. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, that's that's. I, um, it's funny that you said that about the uh, about the um, test, the DNA test, because there was um, a kind of an acquaintance of mine that had said uh, they had a blood and hair sample that they had sent, you know, for, to have um, testing done, and of course came back inconclusive, mm -hmm. and it was um, I want to say like fourteen hundred dollars total. You know, yeah. like obviously the blood was more and the hair was less, but total. And, and, you know, they're like, why did I even do that? Because so many people do say, yeah. well, why don't you do this and get, try to get DNA or whatever? Well, you, I mean, unless you're involved in it, in a study, you know, now there is a great study, but still, you know, they can only take, um, you know, uh, samples under certain conditions, you know, mm -hmm. so it's, that's not really gonna. Um, yeah. That's and half the time the sample disappears. Yes. Shocking. Yeah. That is correct. And I'll tell you another thing, ladies and gentlemen, too, what, what I foresee happening is that, okay, uh, Mr. Bashad, he is the DNA handler, right? Mm -hmm. So now Barb is the scientist that's going to process it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bashad, you did not handle that DNA properly. So now mm -hmm. the chain of custody is in question. Now, now they're going to go after Barb. Yeah. Because they're going to discredit her. Mm -hmm. So now mm -hmm. they're going to attack yeah. both sides, right? Right. So right. they're always going to yeah. have an angle. Nothing's mm -hmm. going to be good enough. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. just solved yeah. a case, uh, Mr. Bouchard, in Charlestown, Indiana, off Touch DNA that was 20 something years old, a murder and a rape case. Yeah. Off Touch DNA. So yeah. the technology is there, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. do they want to accept it? That's that's the challenge. Selective. That mm -hmm. is correct. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Selective. Yep. And with, yeah. with the Bigfoot DNA Sasquatch, it's always nope, unknown female uh, hominid and male hominid of an unknown origin uh, can't be. So let's go to the next one. You know, I mean, right. That's just it. You know, and uh, it, 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 
part of the problem, probably one third of the problem is the ape only and the paranormal division in Sasquatch research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everyone's adamant on their stance. Everybody wants to be the one. We're all looking for the same thing. Why the division? You know, is it like a $5 million bounty on a Bigfoot body? I, mean, I, want, I want to get this. I'm not going to share anything. I mean, who knows what the logic is? It's, it's stupid. We want to get an answer. You know, and if we can come together and come up with an answer that makes science and, and the government nervous, they're going to have to start singing you know, a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. we are going to get it because there's too much division. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's ridiculous. You know, I mean, there's some just absolutely hateful people out there, you know, mm -hmm. on, on both sides, you know. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm an old hippie. I, I don't, I don't, I don't care about who's first. I, I you know, I, yeah. I, I, I want to share. I just want to get the answer. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have any more years left on this planet. I want to know now, just in case yeah. the afterlife <laughs> is just a big joke you know, put together by church, you know. Yes, Dan, even if you had a Bigfoot body and got on the news, it would be spun like Roswell. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we've heard that um, that there have been bodies. That they yes. Have, but, yeah. they, you know, they either disappear or whatever. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so let me see. So you are really a true and this is what you say in your biography. You're a true boots on the ground researcher, which I think is really important and really adds, you know, credibility to what you're what you what you write about what you talk about and how you help people um mm -hmm. you know it's not just um you know uh, research all in books which is that's important also you know what yeah. i mean but that's right. yeah that's really important um you know how did this all start with you as far as your interest in this subject what got you interested in this uh in search of leonard nimoy oh okay you know that it showed they showed the patty film and i was probably 10 or so mm -hmm. and i saw that and i had other reasons which i can't go into here to believe that there's more to the world than they tell us and when i saw that i was going now that i could get my teeth into i i, I just i was just foaming i was just going oh look look you know and you know because you know my dad's drinking martinis <laughs> they don't they don't care you know but that's that got me and so I went to Washington State with my wife. God, it's been 14 years ago, I think. Oh. And we went and got a cabin in the middle of nowhere. And uh, uh, in the, in the uh, we were in uh, Seattle, west, uh, uh, east of Seattle. We were on the other side of the, of the uh, Cascades. Okay. And uh, we're just hiking through the woods. And I found... A ammo box chained to a tree and I'm going that was the year that they legalized pot in Washington State mm -hmm. and so I was going I bet I found somebody's drug stash <laughs> mm. <laughs> and, and I'm left-handed so I tried to open it with my right hand in case it was booby trapped I'd lose my right arm and not my left <laughs> true story you know and so but uh, I did finally get it open and it was geocache you know what that game is? Yeah. It's a game where you go, uh, you join this group. It's called Geocache, C A C H E. Mm -hmm. And you're given coordinates and you get on a plane, get on a truck, boat, car, whatever. You go drive to these coordinates and you find a box that's at this exact coordinates. Mm -hmm. And you open it up and you take something out and you put something of yours in it and you sign this ledger. Well, when I opened the box, there was a card in there from a, a big BFRO investigator from Washington State. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, okay. This is supposed to happen because that just got my blood going. And so I called a guy when I got back to the cabin and he said, I'll put you in touch with some guys. Uh, I told him where I was from, Missouri, and he put me in touch. And long story short, that's how I got in. Oh, wow. That's how you got into that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. And so you have to uh, to become an investigator. I just went on an expedition. To become an investigator, you have to show uh, an acumen for doing that kind of stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know, be relatively intelligent or at least listening to other things. And, and so I started doing reports. And I was getting reports published left and right. Just crazy. They're coming off. So this this guy's on to something. So let's make him a, a researcher. So then they made me uh, uh, an expedition leader because the guy that was running it 
you know, he was doing the job. And so that's how I got into all of this in ED. Wow, that's interesting. And it's so, wow, yeah, that's crazy with finding that card, you know, like of all yeah. things. Wow. Yeah. It's supposed to happen, those kids. Yes, kids. exactly. Yes. Happen, yes. You know, yep. you know, yeah. And uh, it, so, it, so that started this whole thing. But, you know, the books have just been just byproduct of just listening to people. You know, I'm just, you know, talk to me, tell me what you saw. Don't pull any punches. Tell me exactly. I'm not going to laugh like your mm -hmm. husband or your wife or your coworkers. I'm, I'm not going to snicker like the priest. Just tell me. And they tell me. And, you know, and we together, we come up with what you saw. And if we can't debunk it somehow, honestly, without just having a preconceived notion, just you got something. I, I believe you saw what you say you saw. Now let's get to the fine points. And then they start giving me all these details, you know, and, and that's where it started. So three years later, I'm working on my fourth book. I've been done wow. three. I finished and uh, it, it just keeps coming. You know, the habitual yeah, yeah. stuff is. Talk about your, I want to, should we pull up uh, a picture of his of his books? Because I know that you yeah, I mean, uh, and yeah, also I, think I got them on Facebook, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, through Messenger. I think I sent them to you. Yeah, and, and and where where can we get your what where can we get your books? Where are they well, available? Uh, you can order them. I have a web page. Okay. Sqexplorer.com. Sqexplorer. Sq Explorer. Uh, yes. If you could send that uh, send that in our private uh, chat, and I can okay. uh, copy that, okay, uh, Carl, and uh, that way I can oh. copy and paste it into our our chat for everybody. They can just Wait. click on it. You're That's okay, Robert. Okay, it's Carter. Oh, I was <laughs> I like, mean, you Carl. <laughs> what? Yeah, I, I, knew, I knew. 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 I can take care of it. I'll send it. I'll send it in a private chat. Yeah. So I'll call him on that. Yeah, I got a copy of his books. Uh, I've got. I haven't got to unpack since I moved because I usually I uh, show them on shows. Let me share my screen here. That way I could uh, cop Carl. That's funnier now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was like, well, what? Everybody I'm got just so quiet. Carl. I was like, why did everybody get so quiet on me? <laughs> I'm like, who are you? <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, sent you, um, I sent you my email, which is the same thing, sqexplorer at gmail.com. So there they so are. There's yeah. the uh, Motley Crew. There's the, uh, you know, Three Musketeers. Wow. Uh, the one in the middle has gotten the most comments, let's just say comments. When I first put that out, people are going, that's fake. That's baloney. How dare you put that out? What do you, th you know better than that, you know, because of the, the oh. hand. Uh, and I sent you the separate photos. That, mm -hmm. that would be an interesting thing to discuss if you want. But you know, yes, definitely, you definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long are we go? An hour and a half. Yeah. No yeah. Does that, yeah. Does that okay. sound good? Yeah. Yeah. Um, sure. yeah uh, so, so yeah. So there, there's the books, and then um, we will put where you know. Um, which one was your favorite to write? Or did you, uh, you have a favorite? Got the all. The first one was like my first effort, you know, and it, I really liked it because it, it's kind of like if you've never even read anything on Sasquatch, it's got a little everything like counting and speech and uh, stick structures oh. and uh, rocks. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was a good one. Oh, that's, well, that's not mine. No, that's yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. There we go. Let's, yeah, let's get into okay. this. Tell us about this. Here. Well, check out the hair on that baby. Wow. That's incredible. That fingerprint is about six inches long. Here's the story. This is from a woman. Uh, I've known her for about 10 years. She, uh, uh, her and her husband uh, went squatching with me and my partner here in Missouri. Uh, they live in Missouri and they built uh, a brand new cabin on the property they're living in. And so their idea was they're going to live in this brand new house. They never had a new house. And then they're going to, uh, their father, her father has moved into the cabin they were living in so he can have his own autonomy and they can help take care of him because he's elderly. So, uh, and she's very, very anal and meticulous. So as soon as all the workers were gone, she went around the house, cleaned all the windows, everything was spick span, everything's beautiful. She goes into this, uh, it's their all season room and it's got, it's pretty much all glass on, on two sides. And it looks out over this uh, group of trees 
that the Sasquatch watch them. And so she sits in there in her easy chair and watches them watching them. It's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. So she sits down on her chair. First day after all the workers are gone, it's all done. She pops a beer. She's sitting down in the chair. She goes, what the blank? Uh, where did that fingerprint come from? Oh, my God. She's ticked off. So she grabs some Windex and a cloth and goes outside to wipe it off. It's on the inside. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's on the inside wow. of the house. Oh, oh, it got Ooh. there overnight. Oh my gosh! And look at the. Can you blow it up a little more? Oh yeah, yeah. Look at that the detail. Is... Look at the look hair at coming oh, off the side God. of that. You know, looks like my ex-wife. <laughs> no, he did not. He dropped the bomb, ladies and gentlemen. Mic drop. But <laughs> is is that something? Just look at that, and if you pull it back a little, you see some kind of the scars it's got. Because yeah. it looked like uh, up there. Yeah, you can you can see the scars here, yeah. there, yeah, here, and right up, right up in here, and the, the little shiny spot is her uh, flash on her phone. Okay. And I have uh, two other prints, uh, not as good as that one. That's the best one, but she's got two others, and they're in the book. But it, it but it's inside the house. Oh boy! And you, you go through. Well, okay, what's the chain of command on the windows? They sat in a. Uh, big storage, like a big trailer out in the yard uh, for months until, but either, even if it had been touched, it would have had to been touched by a Sasquatch. Cause look at that hand, look at that fingerprint. That's yeah. Not that's human. not human. You know what I mean? And so it, it, it's, it's beyond uh, wow. good evidence, you know, proof. Well, proof. you okay. can tell this is not a human uh, yeah. fingerprint yeah. because of the dermal ridges that it, it's the incorrect oh, yes. uh, formation. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And you were a cop or didn't you work in law enforcement? Yeah. I'm retired captain detective. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. So, so you, 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 you look at that right away and you go, Oh, okay. Yeah. That's not human. Yeah. It's not, it's not. And you know, and they've seen them and they have heard them walking in the house on one, maybe two occasions. Oh my gosh. The husband doesn't believe he doesn't give her what do you mean you don't believe <laughs> what else do you need oh, he dear. can't wrap his head yeah. on he doesn't give her any critique anymore he shut up after this he he shut up but he he just he's not ready you know yeah. and, you know I've got other witnesses that are just the same way husband wife team one believes one doesn't you know it's always the woman who believes because they're the one who has the contact the guy's going nope 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 I'm the man of the house, and I say that doesn't exist, <laughs> or something to that effect. But in that, that's just an awesome fingerprint. Yeah, Did see, she say oh, that is incredible? Did she say, um, you know, when she was cleaning it off? I assume she eventually cleaned it off. Did she say what that process was? Because I hear that it it sometimes it takes quite a bit. If you yeah, uh, it had the uh, alba vernix on it. Alba vernix is the uh, Latin name for the white oily. Mm -hmm. stuff on their hands called Alba Vernix, A L B A V E R N I X, Alba, Alba Vernix. That's what it's called. So, yeah, it was, it's smeared, you know, and yes. almost everybody that has prints has that stuff. If it's on a car fender, mm -hmm. or a, a motorcycle fender, or a, a window outside, you start cleaning it off and it just kind of smears and clouds. You have to keep pouring on the Windex until it goes away. Mm -hmm. Finally goes away. And, yeah. um, wow. Ooh. That's another great one. Wow. Tell us yeah, about this. baby. <laughs> wow. So oh my gosh. just Whoa. look at that for a while. You can blow it up and you can see again the hair coming off of the, the face. You wow. See the you see the eyes. This is the brow ridge up here, uh, deep sunk eyes, the nose. You see the nostrils. You see the lips. You see the chin. That looks like the shroud of what's it called? Turin. Oh, Turin. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the shroud of three <laughs> farmers. Gang is calm. June just honk -a -honk -a. <laughs> Now, this has got a killer story to it. This is. I get the chills just by looking at it. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Whoa. It's, no, it's I can't. Stuff. These people are farmers and they make their living. I, I, I'll just a backstory. I don't want to drag this out, but I've known several generations of this family. I knew the father 
and the uncle who was a, a preacher uh, here in, in, in Missouri, he attracts Sasquatch. Wow. Several people in their family. This family is farmers <clears throat> and they grow all their produce and they sell it in farmers markets, you know? And so uh, something and the, the uh, greenhouses they make are look, looks like log Quonset huts. You know, it's that, that the very thick but soft plastic, you just yes. you know, skin it over. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, so they had, uh, they have two of these side by side. Well, something was getting in and eating the tops off of radishes and all the straw. Oh. Then it would lay down and take a nap on the grass. Oh and they would gosh. come in the morning, you know, and they thought, well, it was neighbors. Their neighbors are coming in and stealing some of their produce. So uh, they uh, they put a lock on the door. They put a door in that had a lock, and so that stopped that for a while. Wow! Well, so in the winter they run a, a propane heater. There's two uh, uh, greenhouses side by side, and there's a propane heater heater in the middle, and they have pipes going out on either side to go into each uh, greenhouse. And this is condensation from the heat buildup during the winter. Oh my God! This. Sasquatch, which is a juvenile, was inside looking out. That's oh how they got this print. This picture is taken from outside looking into the greenhouse. Wow. It, it like puts his face up. It's like if you just put your face up on a piece of plastic and look through it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. And, and, I've wow. got seven or eight other photos like this. This is the best one by far. I've got several others. The, the heads are smaller or the faces imprints. Uh, but it's, it's mostly juveniles. Wow. And, and one of them, there's four or five of them all kind of looking in. At oh, my gosh. Kind of it's like they're looking in the lens of a camera, all trying to squeeze in to get their time, you know. But what they're doing is looking to see if the humans are coming after they've eaten their fill. Oh, wow. Now, pull back on it a little bit. So this is the bottom of the, uh, this is the middle of, the, it's not the bottom of the door, it's the middle of the door uh, where this is. But that looks, uh, the Shroud of Turin is perfect example. Uh, mm -hmm. Pull up the other picture of the uh, handprint that's on the same material. Well, there's the door. Oh my gosh. Now here's the story of the century. The this door wasn't there when they first started noticing food was missing. Then they put this door up and then they lock it. Uh, one night, the owner and they they watch these Sasquatch walking around their woods during the day. They are watching them work in their yard, doing yard work. Uh, I mean, they, they, they see them often. It, it's and again, it's one of those things like we were talking about earlier. You forget to mention it. It happens so often. You know, what'd you do yesterday? Well, I went to Walmart. I went to Taco Bell. Oh, we saw a Sasquatch, too. <laughs> it, it, it's just crazy. Anyhow, my guy, the, uh, they put up lights, and they heard some noise. And he's going to the, to the door of the house. He's going, God dang it, somebody's out there. I'm, I'm, I'm going out there. So he starts running out there. As soon as he comes out the house, he hears this god-awful screaming howls coming out of the woods behind this greenhouse as it gets about halfway there he hears more blood curdling screams and howls coming from the other side of the woods on the left side and it's the sasquatch screaming and yelling <laughs> here's the good part he gets to the the uh door opens the door and he hears the screaming ah! he hears the screaming in, inside the juvenile is caught red-handed in there he runs by him and brushes up against him Ah, they're both standing in the doorway at the oh. same time. They could have him. <laughs> if you knew this kid, you know he's shooting square. And I know this family; they're God fearing. They're very religious. They they don't BS with anybody. They don't want it. You know, none of my people want anything except to get it out. What's going mm -hmm. on? Mm -hmm. it, it ran by him, oh and he's God. about six and a half foot tall. But he's a juvenile compared to the others that are out there. Okay. Wow. That handprint is also on the inside and they are on the inside they put their hand up like this looking out oh see if there's anybody coming then they go out the door wow 
Now pull up, pull up the handprint where he, the, the hand of the owner is putting his hand up there. Yeah. So that's him uh, on the outside, putting his hand against the plastic on the outside. Oh, wow. And that, Massive. So that, that print is from the base of the palm uh, to the tip of the middle finger, 11 and a half inches. Oh, wow. And that's a juvenile though. And so that just that's gives you the idea how tall. Yeah. And, and big. That, the, the, the small, uh, the, the little finger on the uh, handprint uh, got kind of jumped yeah. up. It looks like there's six fingers there, but it just got smushed. Yeah, sure. Uh, but, wow. And his hand is about mm, six and a half inches to the tip of the middle finger from the base of the palm. Wow. But wow. it ran by him. It bro Who else could say that? That's incredible. I would have dropped <laughs> dead. I would have messed myself. Uh, it'd be worth it. I'd, I'd frame those pants and put them on a wall. <laughs> oh. I wouldn't even wash them. But it, it, what a story. It just, yes. how fortunate, you know. And, it, and Carter, this happened in, was this Missouri? Is that what you said? This yeah, is in Missouri. Yeah. We had a question this on that. Was, yes, getting uh, Missouri. This past winter. You know, it's, it's, we have a, uh, one of our friends and our co, we have a show uh, we do on Wednesday nights, Mike Scott. He yeah. has, uh, um, I guess you'd say he's some habituation like clients, I guess you've got, you know, um, same situation with them that they keep getting into their greenhouse and, and taking stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, um, same yeah. people, same people. Oh, okay. Wow. So was this the one, wait, but did, did are they the people that had like, um, there was like a thing drawn on the door? Like a glyph almost. Do you do you recall that one? Uh, not a glyph drawn on the door. There's one left on the ground. Yeah, there was one that he showed that it was in the in condensation. Um, it could be. Yeah. It could be. You know, I've yeah, got yeah. I've got a, a batch of pictures I, I haven't looked at. And here's the thing: uh, there's a very very unethical Sasquatch film guy mm. who tried to screw one of my other habituation witnesses. He tried it on these people too. And they told mm. him to get the heck out of Dodge. You come here again. Uh, yeah. wow. you, you won't like it. You just, you don't mm -hmm. want to do it. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah. I don't want to identify him too much, but you know, no, no. Yeah. If he's not. a friend of yours, he can tell you all about yeah. it. Well, Mike, yeah. Mike is a friend of ours, not the, yeah. not the property. And so owners. that's, uh, you know, yeah. he and I have become friends. I don't know if we've ever met, we've become friends and we discuss it, you know, uh, awesome. and, uh, uh, it's just fantastic exactly. what's going on there. But this guy was very, very unscrupulous and I, I, I'd love to say his name, but I'm going to be bigger oh. than him and not say it, but yeah, so he, he screwed several people over, you know, mm, boy. So, but it, that, that story, and it's not a story, it happened, but it, mm -hmm. it, it ran by him. And so, you know, but they're habituated to the people that live there. They know them, they see them, you know, they put a, a bunch of turnip greens tops on the grave of a cat that they had buried. When I was out there, the, the cat had had a big litter and she, she died when I was out there. Uh, and I didn't know that they didn't find her till I was gone. Um, so uh, they buried her. And I told him, well, don't mark the grave if you can help it, because they, you know, I had another client where they, uh, uh, they, the dog died and they buried the dog and they put 16 carnations all around the grave, came out the next morning, each carnation had been pulled out and laid next to the hole, uh -oh. the Sasquatch, because they don't mark their graves. Mm -hmm. and there was, there's more to that story, but wow. there's, there's a reason they, they, uh, the Sasquatch saved that dog from getting eaten by a pack of dogs. It was the woman's elderly woman's lifelong companion, the dog, and it finally died. And so, uh, she buried it. This is not on this property. And yeah. I said, well, don't, you know, they don't bury their, they don't bury their dead and they don't mark the grave. So they may bury their dead, but they don't mark the grave. So you just don't, don't put it, but they did anyway, because it was grandma. She, yeah. And they pulled them out of the hole. They didn't damage the flower at all. They just laid it root ball and all right next to each hole. Wow. All the way around it. Wow. That's incredible. So, but you know, I was going to put the picture, but you, you couldn't tell anything by it. I took it from too far yeah. away. 
they told me, he said, you told me they would do that. And I said, well, what? He sent me this picture. And it's a, at the top of uh, some turnip greens laid on these rocks that they put on the grave of the cat right outside the greenhouse. Wow. Crazy. So, Incredible. And, and, and this is the day in the life of habituation families. Can you explain habituation for people that aren't aware of what that means? Yeah. Because, you know, you think about habituation, it means would be different things. But in this situation. Yeah. Well, habituation, you know, there's two terms, habituation and visitation. So visitation, much easier, is that they come and go on your property. You may see them in passing, but they don't really live there. They may feed there, but there's not enough cover and natural resources. So they may come to your property and hunt a little here and there, but they live mm -hmm. somewhere else. Habituation is where they live, you know, they live on your property. They see you weekly, daily, monthly, yearly, that you see each other, you know, and you are aware of each other's presence. You just kind of let everybody do their thing, mm -hmm. you know? And so, uh, and habituation just means you're used to your surroundings. They're used to you, you're used to them, you know? And the only thing, you know, that I suggest with habituation folks is that don't get into the habit of feeding them mm -hmm. uh, a really good human food because they get cranky if you don't, if you quit because they sure. want that food because they can't get that in the wild. So, uh, but, you know, but that, like I said earlier, I've got a family with uh, 23 years uh, with this family and the generation before that had their events, but there's not a lot of documentation, but they live there. They come and they go. They see them. He walks his dog. He goes a quarter mile to the front gate every uh, morning with his dog and gets his mail and then walks back. Invariably, he'll see a Sasquatch kind of peek out from behind a tree. Oh, my gosh. And just, you know, one time they uh, showed him a baby. Oh, how cute. Wow. And that's one of the things they just kind of, oh, did I tell you? Uh, yeah, uh, Hank was, uh, you know, walking up to get the mail and they... Uh, they popped out from behind a tree and were hold, holding a baby. Wow. Well, <laughs> oh, <that laughs> chills so, well. That's just incredible. Yeah, it's. It, but this is the this very thing here in the run running by it, brushing up against him and the face print on there. That's a day in the life of habituation folks that have them on their property. Mm -hmm. And they haven't run them off, you know. They, they have a lock on the door, but they have found a way to get in uh, where the, the uh, propane tank is, where the, where the heater is. There's flaps, so you can just lift up the flap yes. on the belly and get in. Oh. So it's not, you know, it's, okay. they're not really trying to keep them out. It's just like a subtle hint. Hey, come on. You know, you know, right, right. Do something, but don't take it all. And, yes. And that's kind of what the, the truce they have. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, what's the, maybe that is what is the like weirdest or most interesting evidence that you've seen with uh with one of your families in this habituation you know kind of processes probably the hand there you go oh <laughs> there you go is that the one okay that's it that's so tell us about this oh my goodness well i tell you what okay uh Pull up the other one that has the time, the, the, uh, the two that have the time date stamp or the book cover that has, because it has the time date stamp. There's the book cover with the, uh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, pull up that. I think I sent you just the book cover. Oh, this, is, this, yeah. would, this would be perfect. This is perfect. Okay. 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 Pull it down just a little bit so we see the top of the other picture. Okay. Uh, up a little higher. I want the timestamp on the bottom. Okay, good. Right there. Right there. All right. So take a look at the timestamp and tell me what you see. Oh, it's four seconds. It Is that right? right after. Yep. Whoa. I mean, <laughs> like what? right after. Yeah. And here's the deal. Wow. Oh my gosh. A scam like it. So see the top photo. You're right. Uh, a real good friend of his has uh, property, so he allows him to hunt because they don't play, uh, pay preachers very well. 
So he's allowed to hunt and keep his kill. So what they do uh, about every couple of months, they walk out and they go check all the SD cards and the batteries and the camera. They got about 32, 33 cameras in this one area. Sounds like me. Yeah, yeah. So if you notice on the first, the top picture, it is 3, 12, and 36 seconds in the afternoon. You see the shadow, the triangular shadow from the lower right corner going up to the left. You see the downed tree behind the preacher. That clump you see behind that downed tree is actually a uh, another blind. It's like it's, a, it's like a ground blind. It's about four foot off the ground. It's on stilts. Yeah, it's a big ground, and just to the right of that's a big corn feeder. So four seconds later, now you see the shadowing on the bottom. The triangular shadow is not quite as. Uh, pronounced. Mm -hmm. You also see the tree that was down in the top picture. It's down there, but it looks like you see the trees in the background on that hand photo. It looks like they're, the, the trees are blowing. Right. No, there's no wind that day. It bumped the camera. Oh. Wow. Wow. Our what? theory is he did not see it, hear it, or sense it. It materialized from nowhere and didn't get the memo. Hey, watch it, dumbass. Don't bump the square box with the eyeball on it. That's a human thing. So it bumped the camera when it either materialized from another dimension, a portal, whatever, or it happened to just sneak up because they can walk like indian they, they walk silent right right they can make no and it just bumped the camera for whatever reason mm -hmm. and that is 3 12 and 40 seconds four seconds count it out Amazing. one Amazing. two three four you don't have time to no yeah anyway that is just the most fabulous sequence I've seen mm -hmm. and you know and I got so much crap when I first put that out from all the haters and the trolls all those people all your mm -hmm. faking it you, you ought to be ashamed of yourself all the crap. <laughs> oh. you know, this guy's a preacher mm -hmm. you know and the right. last, you know and here's here's my you know evidence of the thing uh I was contacted uh on my way down there uh by a guy out of Florida uh, Stacy Brown and mm -hmm. they had wanted, not they, but he had been contacted about, uh, filming one of my published reports in, uh, another state. I won't go Nate. I don't want to say where this is at, but it's, it's in Southwest, Southeast, excuse me. Anyway. So, uh, I call my people and they all of a sudden got real, well, you know, we want, we want some money. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like, the, I mean, it, what? Because they want a film crew to come out and film your thing. You're not going to get rich off this. You're not going to get right. it. You know, you're already in one of my books. So, you know, I thought I was doing them a favor by bringing this up. And they just got real like, well, we, we want some attention. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And so Anyway, I called my guy back. I said, well, my people have decided to be obnoxious. They, they want something. But. I have this new report I just got, and I had just gotten this, this series of photos. And the uh, I, I told him, I said, I've got a photo. I need to send it to you because I, I think the, the show was going to be on Hulu. Uh, I can't remember. It, there was going to do a Sasquatch expose thing. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Right. He sent that photo. I said, I want you to, I haven't had time to look at it. I want you to take a look at it and send it up to, to New York where they were at and have them tell you if they think it's real or, or fake or, or manufactured. He called back about an hour later and said, bring it, let's go. So they decided to go to this property where we ended up filming. Uh, it didn't make the cut because of infighting with the production company mm -hmm. and the producer. And it, you know all the big heads. So anyway, yeah. but that's a that's a real 
hand. Now, if it's a juvenile, uh, you know, maybe we don't know what they look like. I mean, maybe it's not a Sasquatch, but whatever it is, it ain't a human. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not a guy with love. It, it, it's it's it, it's something, you know, and it's just it's mind blowing. And they have had other sightings out there. They have had some quantum metaphysical supernatural things going on out there as well wow. with Sasquatch, uh, possibly with some shape shifting and other things like that. But oh, oh Lord. Uh-uh. Oh. Mm-mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, here yeah. I come. Here I come. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Well, That's you right. know, if, if, if you read the book, if you, if, Chris, if you read this book, I put his his impression of what he saw and I let him, I said, just you tell it. So he, I, all his religious, uh, you know, theological education came to forefront. And he was, you know, telling, going into the Nephilim and, you know, the, the angels and the dark ones and they fell from grace mm-hmm. and all that. But, you know, but he saw a Sasquatch morph into a deer, morph into a oh, elk, elk with wow. razor sharp teeth. Oh my gosh. Well, he was on another day uh, at another part of this property. And I let him, you just say what you thought. Basically, he thought at, at that point that he was being tempted by the devil. He was testing his faith to show him all these, not this hand, but the, the thing where he saw the elk uh, and the Sasquatch and the deer. There's also three deer sitting down while all this was going on behind him. They didn't move a bit. They were just standing there like they were, you know, decoys or something they would it was bizarre but so he went in and, and put all his theological opinions and and beliefs in the book i didn't other than spelling and grammar i, I didn't take any of it out because you know people don't talk about that they do talk mm-hmm. about well, i think it's the nephilim you know the fallen angels well he went into great detail about that and that's why he he thought when he saw that sasquatch morph into a uh, a deer that morphed into a uh, an elk with razor sharp teeth he thought he was being tempted in uh, by the devil to test his faith, and he rebuked him. And just like Chris did, he pulled out his cross, and yeah. you know he did the, the whole thing. But you know he's seen the Sasquatch. The landowner's seen him. You know, and when I left, here's what's cool. When I left after all the filming and everything was done, I left a gifting area at this uh, one convergence where there's uh, three cameras. The way they have the cameras, they have three cameras. They triangulate them. So there's a camera on one tree, and there's a camera on another tree facing that camera. Then there's a camera on another third third tree, which is facing the other camera. So it's a triangular thing. So you don't miss anything. So, but something didn't like my gifting area because mm-hmm. the next day or two after I left, I can't remember, uh, it ripped a camera off the tree, tore the strap, and tore the metal buckle that was keeping the door closed. And oh wow! Destroyed the camera. Wow! I have the camera here. It looks like they took a bite out of the <gasps> SD card. Oh my gosh! Because there's something on the card, but we can't get to it. And these guys that you talk about DNA, these guys that they want to rebuild, you would have to rebuild. It's a mini SD in a large SD card reader. Oh wow! Plugged in. So there's damage to both, and it looks like a little, just a little chunk was taken out where it no longer will make connections. But they want thousand, fifteen hundred bucks to do that. Mm-hmm. And I've got the camera and the SD card here. I'm just waiting for the lottery. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But you know, wow. but they didn't they didn't like that. There's teeth marks and claw marks wow. on it. I mean it's it was torn up, you know. Oh my bear goodness. possibly, though they've never seen a bear there. Uh you know, uh, mm-hmm. there there are bear known in this state, but not in this particular area. But anyway, uh mm-hmm. This wow. whole sequence was just like mind blowing, you know, and, you know, uh, I've put it up wow. on Google lens. I've, I've looked at it myself and I don't see any tampering. It's, it doesn't exist as a prop. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. just, uh, and who knows what a juvenile hand looks like. I mean, I, right. Yeah. Right. Know. But I, I've compared it and it's, it's got the gorilla knuckles and the chimp knuckles. Mm-hmm. It, it's those kind of slightly turned up uh, nails. Yes. Uh-huh. It, it, it kind of throws you off a little bit. Yeah. But regardless. Somebody WTF, said, the, I'm sorry. 
Is it WTF? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, right, right. That's for sure. You know? uh, somebody back in the in the chat had said, um, does it look like it has uh, like double, what they say, doubling of the digits? But I think it's just the hand must be. Like yeah, uh, I think this is the uh, left hand. The finger you can't see is underneath the one that's on the left and then the mm -hmm. thumb is over on the on the far left uh mm -hmm. there's five fingers there it's just yeah. hard to see if you render it to a, a a negative and then make it a black and white you can see the delineation a little better you know okay. yeah uh, that's, that's I, I left it like that for the book but do, okay. what do you do when you see something like that mm -hmm. i mean you, you know other than cry fake you know yeah. uh, you know but mm -hmm. you know and, and that is the apers and the paranormal and just the haters and trolls, everybody pitching in and chiming in, you know, mm -hmm. and that's where it gets to the thing where everybody wants to be the one, you know, I've got stuff and I know other researchers have video they can't show. You would be 100% convinced that they exist if you saw what I and other people have. We, do, we, we can't show because we promise this is awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I'm right. here to the grave. Yeah. You know, yeah. Chris, you, I know you've seen right. stuff, so, you know, right. It, it, so right. in Barb too, I don't know what you've seen, but you know, I mean, it, it's yeah, out there, we don't you use know, saying. Mm -hmm. you yep. can't put it out there because somebody will take it and use it for their own. Right. Or right. just trash it and ruin it for everybody. Oh, yeah. So it's best. And that's another reason why good evidence mm -hmm. doesn't Definitely. come to the yep. forefront. Yep. Definitely. Because what could happen? Yep. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a guy that we're working with, uh, Chris um, and I, Chris Hensley and I, um, that has just been sending us some great evidence. And he said he he left my page. Um, he left like a bunch of pages. Not, and I and I I felt bad because I'm like, wait, here's this man. He's submitting this great evidence, and I, you know, I thought I'm just gonna drop him a message. I don't know him, but I'm just gonna say. And I just said, hey, Jack, is everything okay? Like, I hope nobody offended you, because that's really, I really don't want anybody on my page to yeah. to to offend somebody that's yeah. that's submit that's trying to, you know. Um, and he said no, and he just there was another situation. He's like, I don't, I don't like like all the YouTube stuff. And I said, I'm sorry about that, you know. But that's how I learned. That's how I learned. Anyway. Yeah. But um, but yeah, but he's continuing to um, send us some great stuff and we're going to have him on the show. But because of um, there's been so much, like you said, hate and negativity and, you know, and just rude comments with this great, great um, evidence that he has. So it's yeah. really a shame. Yeah, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. Um, Carter, have you ever seen a Bigfoot? I've seen him three times. At oh, wow. I have not had the now, I have seen shadows. Yes. And I'm fairly certain what they are, you know, is yeah. it, is the deep woods right. walking uh, on a ridge overlooking where we are. I've seen that, uh -huh. but not, not a clear daylight shot mm -hmm. like this or mm -hmm. anything, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, and, but I, I, I know they exist. I, I made contact with a clan uh, during the expedition in Illinois, 2019, and that changed everything for me. So I, I don't need to see them. I would love to see one just to bask in the glory of the the creature. But, you know, uh, yeah, the, the Green Book here, uh, that was the uh, seminal moment for me. If you see, you see these five rocks here on the end. Mm -hmm. On the very end, on the other end, there's one round rock right there. Now... The expedition I led, 2019, BFRO, uh, there was somebody going to do the expedition, and they canceled it the last minute. They couldn't do it. I'm talking about an investigator who's going to okay. lead it, and he couldn't do it. It had a family problem or whatever. So they put out an APB because there's some people that did not want their money back. I want to go. I want to go on the expedition. So you find somebody. We gave you our money. Keep it. I want to go. So I ended up with four people. I'm the leader. There's four rocks behind me. And Harold, my partner, who was there but not there, is on the round rock on the very end. Oh, so my what God. happened was uh, I took him down, and we went to the Trail of Tears in Illinois. Very spooky 
bizarre place a lot of pain and agony there and everybody in town says well i, I know where you don't want to go you don't want to go down this area over here because uh, ain't nobody in town no, nobody after after dark will ever go there nobody ever goes there it's just too much weird stuff i said well that's where i'm going <laughs> because that's you can't tell me that tell me not to go yeah there. yeah <laughs> what am i stupid or what <laughs> so, so anyway we went this is 2019 had a great expedition we've cast about seven or eight really good prints we had knocks, a lot of structures, very ornate, uh, uh, complicated structures, really great trip. And so this log, uh, we went down this ravine. Now, Harold, my squatching buddy who lives in uh, Illinois, he can't go some places because he's had two strokes. He's had cancer. And so he went with us as far as the entrance to this ravine, and he stayed in this truck the night we went down there and this log was where we stopped for the night. Then the next night we went back and uh, the, the problem with the next night, we had a lot of great activity. The, the next night was Saturday night. The problem was Saturday night. That was the first day of hunting season. So there was gunfire everywhere all day. So we had zero activity at night. I kind of knew that, you know, and when I you know, was got there scouting, looking for the uh, prints we cast, I saw guys up in trees. So I knew, okay, well, anyway, but they wanted to go back and I did too. So we went back and uh, Harold stayed back at camp that night. He stayed back at the camp. We didn't camp there. We camped somewhere else. So great trip. 2020, Harold and I talk. I said, you know, I want to go back and see if that place still has the magic that I know it did, because it just felt really, really good. And so uh, now COVID had hit. This was October 2020. COVID had hit and there was nobody anywhere. You know, restaurants were shut down. There's nothing anywhere. Nobody out, nobody out in the woods anywhere. Nobody went to this place anyway because they were too scared of it. <laughs> so uh, I went down uh, and Harold followed me a little bit, but he still couldn't get all the way. So, but I went down and I went down to this log and I said, you know what? I'm going to leave my camera here. And this was on a Wednesday. And uh, I'll just go back and get it on the way back to Kansas City. Because we were just staying one night. It was just a, a 600 mile round trip just to see if the magic was still there. So I left my camera by this log. Went back the next morning to get my camera. These rocks are there. Oh. They weren't there before. Whoa. It, I get kind of, <laughs> so I get curious when I tell the story because it's yeah. an aha moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Be a big boy. Oh, no, it's stop, stop. You're fine. Anyway, so I'm looking at it. And I'm going, where do these come from? There's nobody out here. We didn't do how these rocks get here. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. I'm going, holy crap. That's us. That's what? us. You know, that's the five people. That's me, the leader, and the four people behind me. There's Harold, who was there, who wasn't there. <laughs> you know, that's incredible. He, Oh, it just, it, you know, I'm getting all, ooh, well, that's okay. Yeah. Hey, but you don't know I need, mean? it's just one of those moments that just get you. And so it's about eight 30 in the morning. And so I call my wife and I said, hey, you're not going to believe this. You know, I'm, I'm talking She goes, slow down, slow down. So I said, well, I said, you're not going to believe what happened. I told her about the rocks and everything. I texted her a couple of pictures and she goes, well, what time did that happen? I said, I, Hell, I don't know. We left about 2, 2.30 and it's COVID. There's nobody here. It gets dark at 5, 5.30 in October. So nobody was out. This is too coincidental because the leader rock. Oh, my God. Anyway, he goes, I, I said probably about 8, 8.30. I'm just guessing. I have got yeah. no idea at night when it happened. She goes, well, I was getting ready for bed last night about 8.30, 9 o'clock in a blue orb comes in to our bedroom, 325 miles away, flies around the bedroom, goes into the bathroom and disappears. Oh, wow. Whoa. Wow. They were letting wow. her know and me know that. Oh my gosh. We know where you live. You are one of the cool kids. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, it's, it's, I, I get so no. it's just like a, 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 a cathartic moment. You know, yes. when I realized that they've made, you know, contact. And so, wow. I, and so, and ever since that day, four years or three years later, uh, we have had so much bizarre stuff happening 
in our house wow. that was not happening before. I'm watching TV one night with my wife. Something taps me on the head three times. Oh my gosh. The next night we're watching TV and all of a sudden the TV goes off. I'm, I, I just happened to look at the remote. The remote jiggles on the coffee table. Somebody turned it off. Wow. Pulling, t- pulling uh, pillows out from under our heads, uh, lifting, lifting me up out of my bed and carrying me off to the side of the bed. Uh, I mean, oh, voices, knocks on the door. There's nobody here. I mean, I know it's them. And, you know, and we don't sleep very well. And so uh, we, we meditate at night because we're both type A's. Mm-hmm. You know? And so uh, we meditate. And as they get into that alpha state, I am shown the place they live. And it looks just like my research area here in Missouri. It also looks very, very similar to this ravine because both of them have big, these long 75 to 100 yard ravines in them. And uh, yeah, stingray, see, just weird stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, and so I've been making this list. It's called Strangeness in Our Home. I've got about four Word document pages in 16 oh. form where I'm typing everything that happens. It's just bizarre. Now, it it's happened since that day. We've had a few odd things here and there before that, but this is like boom, 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 boom. Now, when they show me, where they're living, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going down this ravine. I'm going down kind of slow like this, you know, I'm like, I'm floating down this ravine, but the forest, the trees are, they're going by like hundred miles an hour. Their version of time and space is far different than ours. And so I, I'm, I'm floating, but it's going, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. It, it, but their version of time, if you're looking mm-hmm. into portal dimension, you know. Wow. It's bizarre. And I see the kids running around, sticking sticks in the ground and, and getting mice and, and uh, you know, uh, moles and bugs and eating them. And the parents are kind of sitting around. It's just like a bunch of, you know, fat, lazy humans sitting around a picnic. You know what I mean? They're just staring. And at some, a couple of times, uh, four or five faces have all kind of crowded up and tried to look at me. At the wow. same time, they're all getting their face in a, a camera lens, like, hello, hello. You know, it, it, it's funny, yeah. but it's it's mystical. It's just like the, the family with that face, you know, I showed you where I have four or five photos where there's four or five faces. It looks like they're all kind of crowded into this one area trying to look. So, but I mean, that's how I know everything that people are telling me and everything that I've experienced in here is the real deal. And I don't give a blanket blank what anybody says right because it's the real thing you know mm-hmm. so and i'm not mm-hmm. an actor i can't cry on demand so that's just but then not I'm, yeah yeah i was right. oh my gosh right. this is the i was gonna that, say that same thing yes right. this is the effect it has on me yes and just reliving that just telling that story mm-hmm. and it tells me that that happened and that is why it was there. And the other thing with the rock. Now we went back 2022, and uh, myself, Harold, and my partner here, Brian Woods, and his partner, a researcher friend of mine, uh, Chris uh, uh, Callahan, is a fireman in Illinois. So we all met, and we went down there. This time, Harold made it all the way to the rock. You. Because, you know, he was walking with two sticks, you know, we get there and all the rocks are gone. The one rock that was at the end where Harold was, was where the five rocks were. Oh, my gosh. They knew we were coming. And I knew it was that rock because the bottom of it still had fingerprint powder on it because I dusted it for prints on the off chance that somebody left a print. Of course, it's been exposed to the elements too long, but you never, you know, you never just assume anything. So I, I it still had the uh, fingerprint powder on the bottom of the rock. Oh my gosh! So I knew that was the rock that had been on the other end of the log. Yeah. It's serendipity yeah. at its finest. <laughs> wow! Wow! That yeah. is just incredible. Yeah. Wow. You know, wow, that uh, what I was saying about I was just thinking about when you were because, you know, there's a lot of people that I talk to and Chris Grizzly, you know, same thing is that they do. They get, you know, they get either like um, 
almost like post-traumatic stress, you know, just yeah. uh, like symptoms. Or well, I'm crying they, like a I'm crying like a little cry? Yeah, boy. Cry? You know, I, I'm sure you're not the, I'm a yeah, you're, man. What the hell's wrong with me? You know, <laughs> and you know, or you know, or just scared. Um now, and you know, and it's like we're not hiring professional actors to do this. It's just they have right. such a profound effect. And that's you know, that is why it's so it, it's so frustrating. Um, when you have people like you said you know, these haters or the naysayers or the negative. And then, you know, when you're met with that and you're having this emotional response, but you're, yeah. and what you, me, 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 you know, oh, it's so frustrating. And I feel for the people that even, you know, um, but anyway, yeah, that's, it's obviously what a, what a cool, cool situation. Oh my yeah, gosh. It, it, that they it, set up. Know, wow. I'm getting all teary and all that stuff. But <gasps> when I'm talking to people on the phone and they're finally getting to talk to somebody who's yeah. listening to them and not scoffing at them, Mm-hmm. They cry. I've had a couple of women and one guy start bawling on me, you know, because, you know, the big badass macho hunter, you know, uh, I've been hunting these years of these uh, woods for 30 years. If something like that existed, I'd have seen it. And I hadn't yeah. seen it, so it doesn't exist. Then, uh-huh. you know, a few months later, I get a phone call. Uh, can we talk? <laughs> you know, wow. He's had his aha moment, you know. And so uh, it's, it, it, it was cathartic. It, it still it still affects me, obviously. You know. That's amazing. You know, yeah, so. absolutely. Wow. You know, I, 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 I was cutting up an onion here just so I could get teary. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't see yeah, that. Yeah, I saw the onion. I saw yeah, it. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Well, so what yeah. do you do with something like that? It's just like, yeah. Yeah. oh, my God. Wow. And, and so it, it just, you know, it's a, it's a real thing. So when these people are telling mm-hmm. you researchers or you – spouses or friends or co-workers don't be dissing them don't be laughing at them making fun of because this is serious stuff to some people it, it, it changes their lives it changes their view of the world around them yeah and if you're sitting there going scoffing well you're gonna they're gonna go in a hiding hole and they'll never say a word to anybody they'll go to the grave with it <laughs> yep i mean you know you know i've heard several stories like that well grandpa used to tell stories like that but he he quit talking you know right sure time. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, I don't know how I don't know how I can top that. <laughs> Just incredible. Um, you I know that and you said you study um, burial sites. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm interested in the burial phenomenon. Yeah. And so uh, because I don't think they bury their dead. If they do, they bury them uh, below some incredibly huge boulders that it would probably take five Sasquatch to move, okay. you know. Uh, there's a big theory. There was a video that was on YouTube about three, four months ago. It was up for a day and it disappeared. I don't even remember oh. whose channel of of a guy has a contract to go in. This is Washington State, your neck of the woods, <laughs> and go in and take downed redwoods and big cedars that are down, not cutting them down, but they'd have fallen because they're dead and, and cutting them up and taking them off to sell for firewood. He's got a a contract we can go do that you can't get anything live now but you clean it up a little bit yes he took one and uh if you do some research you might find that story but i haven't seen the video this guy cut up the tree and inside this massive tree i don't know how big around it was probably 10 or 12 feet all the way mm-hmm. uh, there was a, a skin and fur covered skeleton inside the tree oh wow wow so I don't know if that was staged because it it disappeared. Man, I went the next day and it was gone, and I, I didn't even think because all trace of it. And I was going, hmm. Remember the yeah. Did I see that? But the Native Americans talk about that. They go into the trees to get energy, and they may go into the tree to die, wow. or they may go to another dimension, another through a portal, and go somewhere else to die. So there's no graves. I know there are bodies. I know there's some that have been shot and killed. I mean, I just I know this, you know, I can't prove it. But, you know, mm-hmm. you, you've all both of you have heard a dozen right. things like that. So it's not like it's, it's a no brainer, you know. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I believe that they cannot at, at, at certain times. They're kind of stuck with that flesh and blood thing until they can you know, get the energy to disappear. Unless, you know, they're of a, mm-hmm. a higher vibrational frequency. It can make themselves disappear and not get mm-hmm. shot. But, Uh, And that gets really complex, you know, theories is all it is. But, you know, you know, they've been shot. Mm -hmm. There's stories from reliable people that I believe. And, you know, uh, 
you know, another guy in my, the, the, the green book, the guy in Canada, half of that book is a guy in Canada who's uh, seen stuff of that nature and wow. been told not to ever talk about it or you know, never work again in the mm -hmm. wow. lumber industry. Anyway. So you think overall then that um, what do they, you would say, what do they do with their dead then? You said, well, you, you know, part of me thinks, you know, Let's eat them. Why? Why not eat them? They're dead. Their body is gone. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think they're very, actually, very spiritual creatures. So they may all feast on their body in some kind of ceremony and eat them yeah. and take the bones and throw them in the rivers and lakes or uh -huh. throw them in deep caves and crevices that no one will ever find. You know, or they may go to another dimension and and just pass away that way. You mm -hmm. know, but we're gonna find a, a body. You know, and I know the gov. I, I just guarantee you, the government has a body and you guys have probably seen videos that you can't share and i can't either that tell you exactly that they do walk the earth and maybe if they do get shot and injured or killed somehow whether on purpose or an accident they they die uh but not out in the open just like elephants lions tigers bears you don't you don't find those the alpha predators they go somewhere to either get well or they die and they hide mm -hmm. them so they're under a gigantic sequoia tree that's fallen on the ground or multiple boulders that only they have the strength to do. And they get under and crawl into this cave. And if I make it out of here, I'll get out. If not, if I'm supposed to die, then I'm I'm already buried and they're never going to find me. Mm -hmm. Wow. So wow. Uh, yeah. that's, that's yeah. interesting. It's only a working theory because we've got nothing else to go on. You know? No, but that's that's one of the best theories I've you know wow yeah um and you also study infrasound have you ever had um an experience with that yourself personally oh yeah, oh, yeah. I, I've, got, I've got zapped <laughs> it's a great story it's almost six we got time no absolutely yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. uh i have a real good start it's either infrasound or telepathy but okay. uh my wife sees all my photos and files and stuff she's looking oh that's interesting that's you know and so this is about three, four years ago. And, uh, but she was kind of like, well, I'm glad you got a, a hobby. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm going, yeah. 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 This is me. And my Frank, <laughs> you know, I'm, you know. So what I did was I said, you know, I'll tell you what, I'm going to take you camping. I'm going to take you to one of my research areas. And I did. And she's an old Nebraska farm girl. So she has no problem with popping a squat or pulling a head off a chicken and cooking right over the fire. She's, you know, she's not a girly girl. So she went, so we went to the, my research area, which is down in Ellington, Missouri. Uh, won't tell you where, but I'll tell you the general area. And it's very, very active. The place that I saw that one disappear when I led my first expedition, oh. that's this area that became my research area. I've had a lot of weird stuff there. So anyway, uh, you can't drive down this ravine because it's rocky and jagged and they put a gate up a long time ago even four wheelers got stuck down there and the conservation department got tired of rescuing people you know strapping them onto chains and pulling them out even four wheelers aren't supposed to even need that anyway so i backed my suv up to this big gate and we started walking down and just within a couple three or four minutes my wife's going nope nope i'm done i'm nope i, I believe it you know, th that's their living room. They live there. And so you get the heebie-jeebies, you know, your hair standing on, on, on the back of your you, you know, you get the heebie-jeebies, you know, that you're in the presence of something, you know. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't bother me because I, I know what it is. And I know they mean me no harm. I'm not too worried about it, you know. And if, <laughs> if I get killed by a Sasquatch, I got a great witness and I'll show you. <laughs> you know, look, 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 they tore his head off. I can't believe it, you know. But anyway. <laughs> So we're walking down and she's going, nope, 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 I'm done. I'm done. I'm going back to the car. I said, no, 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 no. You, it, look, it's only about 75 yards down to the bottom. It's a nice, gentle, it's it's kind of rocky, but we can get down there. And it, I'll show you because I was going to shore the curve where that Sasquatch walked around the bend and vanished when I was watching on camera. That's where I was going to. And so we go about another 10, 20 feet. She's going, I, I'm, uh-uh. I'm no, just I'm going back to the car. I said, well, you can't because I got the keys in my pocket, <laughs> you know. And so uh, I said, look, the, look, the, the car is just right up there. And I shine my light where the car was and it's not there. It's gone. And I'm going, where's no. the car? 
And she's going, what do you mean, where's the car? You're looking right at it. I'm shining the flashlight. I go, the car's not there. Where the hell is it? What is wrong with you? And I, I said, well, where's the car? There's nothing wrong with me. Someone took the car. Where to go? You're looking right at it. You're shining the light on it. So I, I just, as a, a habit, I just said, well, I'm going to shine it down at the bottom where we're going. thought maybe I got turned around. Uh-huh. There's my car. I said, oh my how gosh. did you down there? She's going, what are you talking about? There's no car down there. Car's up there. No, look, look, I'm seeing my car where it's impossible for it to be. Whoa. And I shine my light back up. I said, look, it's gone. She goes, no, you're shining your light. I said, no, it's not there. Whoa. And we went through this three or four times. And I finally said, ah, I know what you're doing. You guys are messing with me. I came here to show my wife something and you decided to show me something instead. <laughs> wow. And they were jacking with me. And oh. I, I was going back and forth. And then yeah. finally I said, okay, I shined it back where the car was. And there it was. I shined it back where it couldn't have been, where it isn't anymore. And it was gone. Wow. And they put the impression in my head, either is either mental telepathy or infrasound. Cause I've heard uh, several people, I've watched a couple of guys get zapped and knocked to the ground with infrasound. Mm -hmm. You know, it can create uh, hallucinations because that's, you know, lions, tigers, dolphins, mm -hmm. a lot of the big predators, uh, they, uh, whales, they use infrasound to communicate and to hunt. Sasquatch uses to hunt. So, but they showed me something. Mm -hmm. you know, I was going to be, I'll show you. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm the, the one going, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, they got me. But it was like clear as a bell. I was seeing it where it wasn't. I was damn sure I knew exactly what I was looking at. And mm -hmm. how they did that, I didn't know how that my car got there. And then Do I you have any other physical symptoms at the time? I, uh, you know, you know uh, the tingly spidey sense thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, when we yeah. first started, she was getting it. I had it. But I have it when I go to a lot of my researcher. I, I get it. That, that tells me somebody's there probably mm -hmm. a watcher you know they have you know mm -hmm. when they're sleeping during the day there's always a watcher that stays up yes that's what you know, they you got the mm -hmm. ship union guys mm -hmm. you know i'll see you bob you know here's your lunch pail just go watch, <laughs> watch sleep, so, you know but but no, other than that i had no repercussions from it you know I, it was like <sighs> you know mm -hmm. kind of a rush of adrenaline and then it was over mm -hmm. but it, it just floored me that and that was if i Watch that one disappear, and that didn't do it. Yeah. Having my car disappear where it could not have been, the car, the keys were in my pocket. Mm -hmm. you know, she was totally, she was getting the heebie-jeebies because she she was, you know, and she's somewhat of a sensitive, you know. She's she's uh, done some paranormal work, you mm -hmm. know, but she's uh, too busy with her job, and so her, mm -hmm. her attention to that is not where mm -hmm. it ought to be. She just doesn't mess with it anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but so but that was like, Gary to see your reaction. Like what's going on? Is he losing yeah, it? You know, like, what's... Are you losing it? Yeah. Are you, you smoking? Yeah. Take a gummy. Yeah, what? <laughs> what? Um, no, the back in the tent, you know, <laughs> yeah, but it was, it was that real, yes. you know, and I'm shining the light and <laughs> where's the car? You're shining your light on it. Yeah. The, the tail lights are reflecting. You can't see. What are you talking? There's no car there. My car's down there. Yeah. What's down there? There's nothing there. <laughs> it was just, there was a comedy of errors. Until you know, I realized what was happening. Yes, and then you know, I, I did. Yeah. My car was where it always was in the first place. I was asking you about that because that <clears throat> the time, excuse me, that I I guess I was hit by inf infrasound, and one of the things was that I was so disoriented as far as where I was, and this is so ridiculous because if you you know if you if I you walk into the area where I was in the woods, and I mean I can see my house, I can see my my garage. But I was so turned around, like trying to get back home. Like, I don't even know. Yeah. You know, like you said, it's just everything seemed I was so disoriented. And I remember um, um, as I'm walking back, trying to get out of the woods, I just I thought, just keep looking at the the um, roof of the garage, because if I didn't have that to yeah, look. Focus, at, focus. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I, I don't even yeah. know. But yes. Yeah, so I've been frozen crazy. where I couldn't get out of my sleeping bag. And I, I, I had to take a leak. This was in Iowa, and I heard boom, boom, 
very heavy footprints walking oh. by my tent about 5 5 30 just just before sunrise and my partner uh steve uh was camping about oh 25 yards away in his tent i thought well, maybe he got up and went and took a leak or was just walking around and i that's what i heard uh but i heard it walking off and i couldn't i couldn't move i couldn't unzip my bag and i i had to pee and i, I just i couldn't move anything and as it faded off into the distance the footprints the the thump 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 i was finally able to get out of my bag and get out thank god in the nick of time and <laughs> when i got out to take a leak he was up taking a leak he asked wow. me did you just walk by here i said no did you just walk by here no <laughs> all righty then you know, <laughs> so i mean it is what it is but you know i couldn't get out of my tent it was just mm -hmm. bizarre. I've, I've, I've got a half a dozen examples of that people you know partners of mine you know yeah they just they couldn't move because they were in the presence of a Sasquatch and they did not want them to move from where they were because there was probably a young one around or something, wow. you know, or and so they, they couldn't, they couldn't move until they could. And, and so uh, um, I mean, that's how they hunt prey. Uh, there's a lot of times people will report you know, seeing deer running amok in a big open field. They're just running around like crazy. They don't know where they're going. They run, you know, 20 yards here and they stop and go 20 yards this way. They're, they're totally confused as to where they are, what they're doing. And that's you know, the Sasquatch disorient them, run up behind them, snap the legs, break the neck, boom, dinner served, you know. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, uh, wow. It, you know, but, you know, lions and tigers use that to communicate. Uh, elephants, uh, dolphins. Uh, Orca. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, giraffe. Mm -hmm. A lot of big animals use that yes. to yeah. communicate and to find prey. Mm -hmm. Roger Blair, so, yes, they do. They do give off a weird odor. I have only smelled a sweet, pungent odor. Everybody else re uh, reports this really nasty, you know, urine, wet dog, death mm -hmm. uh, smell. I, every time somebody smelled that, I smelled something very sweet and pungent. Okay. Was it like a bad pungent? Like, a, like, like you know how like just dead things can sometimes smell? Like no, sweet? it was like uh, the, the sweet smell of death. It, it could have been, but it, it had a, a touch of perfume to it. Okay, so like more of a pleasant yeah there's, it's more like a you know just Not somebody like wearing some really bad color okay and a lot of it you know <laughs> yes yeah gotcha <laughs> um uh keeper true crime and paranormal ask was your car stuck no um was the car no. stuck no Did you get it okay all right no it was just it was always yeah. where it was i where... just thought somewhere else <laughs> yeah yeah and i wasn't stoned or high or anything else yes right right <laughs> Right. So like, a, um, were, uh, was it like a, oh, like a rotted foot or musk? Was it like, would you say like a musk scent or probably? Uh, it was really sweet. And okay. the guys I was, was with two guys and they were going, oh God, you smell that? Oh God. Yeah, they did. They were talking, oh God, that's nasty. Oh God, mm -hmm. well, there's somebody's around here somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, I smell, I just smell this sweet, really like a really bad air freshener or something. It was just very yes. sweet, you know, like Febreze or something, you know, uh -huh. like and there's much. some theories that, uh, that odor is not necessarily from not bathing and having deodorant and products like we do, but maybe it's something they emit as they come into or out of a portal or an ore. Mm -hmm. something that is generated just by getting down to a small enough size to get into another dimension so they can get back up to their other size. Uh, I haven't visited that too much, but it's, it, it's an interesting theory. I mean, we don't know. Yeah. So why not? I mean, you know, mm -hmm. certainly. Interesting theory. Yeah. All right. Well, I think, um, does anybody have any questions? I don't see any more questions. Ooh, ooh, me, me, me. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what would you like to ask yourself? Mr. Yeah. <laughs> now, is there anything else that you want to add? This is, I just thank you so much for sharing your time. And this is just, yeah, amazing. thank like, you so much. Wow. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. I've got a lot yeah. more weirdness, you know, I mean, it's, you know, and my, my thing is when it happens to you and you're talking to people and you've experienced that, you know, exactly what they're saying. And I can feel, I can finish their sentence before they finish it. They're going, Oh my God, how'd you know that? Well, because I've experienced that part of it, you know, yes. and when, you know, I, I've got all these people in my books, 
I didn't just find the crazy people only. These are real people. Right. I'll talk about the casts. Yes. Yeah. I want to hear about that. Thanks for pointing that out. Standing stones. Events. They're having these events and they're scoffed at. So everybody else thinks they're crazy. So they just, so I'm saying you're not crazy. I can verify mm -hmm. that. I've experienced what you just said. I've experienced that very same thing. It happened to me. And, you know, a couple of times I've said, well, my wife was with me during this one event. And so uh, you're good. What you just said, I'm with you. Uh, anyway, uh, the, the handprint over my head uh, was taken here in Missouri by my partner that is got dermal ridges. That is in my first book. The dermal ridges are spectacular on that. And that is about 12 and a half to 13 inches from the base of the palm mm -hmm. to the tip of the uh, middle finger. Wow. And that was taken here in Missouri. The footprint on the left was taken at a habituation uh, property that I used to to uh, oversee. I don't anymore. Uh, they tried making money off the Sasquatch thing and it, it just ruined it. But uh, that, that footprint is uh, 17 inches. If you add the two inches for the toes that didn't make it into the casting because he ran out of plaster, it would be, that's why I have the, uh, rule, the uh, yardsticks there, the rulers next to him. So you can see what size oh, good idea. A photo that has the toe prints in the sand but he, he ran out of plaster. Mm -hmm. And so the uh, print next to that right there, that is Patterson Gimlin. Oh, wow. And that one there is uh, Roger Freeman. Oh, Freeman wow. cast. Killer wow. cast. That thing is big and meaty. I think it's 19 inches. It's huge. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Incredible. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. So. <sighs> Anytime, guys. I'd love to come oh, back. Thank and you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so, yep. And so I'm going to put, so um, to, to get your books, um, go to your website, S as in Sam, U as in use. You no, SQ. Me. SQ. Sorry. I'm glad you said that. Okay. Because I wrote that. Okay, That's right. SQ. That's okay, Donna. Laura. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, excuse me, I'm Beth. No, <laughs> that's what people always All right, me. Susie. All right. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. yeah. But yeah, and I'm gonna I'll put that in the um in the comments in the in the um permanent comments. Yeah, it's just sqexplorer.com. SQ and you can uh, you know you can order the books off there. I, I I'm selling them. Uh, if you want to buy all three, I'll give you a special price. Just email oh, me. Oh nice. You know? Okay, awesome. And they're all yeah. autographed, they're all full color, they're autographed, Ooh, cool. they're very nice, they're not cheap, they're they're nice, yeah. they're nice books. Awesome. Awesome. That's wonderful. Well, thank you again. Um, yes. Yeah, thank you so much. I greatly yes. appreciate that. Well, Thanks for coming blast, on guys. there. Good yes. energy. Good energy. Yes. So oh, good thank stuff. you. Yeah, you too. Yeah. And, and then if you have any, you know, any significant, please don't ever hesitate to contact us and we'll get you back on. We'd love that. <laughs> <Aww>. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome, yeah. That's I couldn't, great. but you know, it, it happens every time I tell that freaking story. I can't, wow. I, I try to man up and go, okay, bite my lip. And, you know, I, 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 I cry because I bite my lip. So I quit crying because I bite my lip. And then I start oh. going anyway, because it's one of those That's moments, you know, wow. you know, when you know, that's it. Yeah. Yep. So profound. Well, so. thank you, sir. You have a good evening yeah. and nice okay. to see you yeah. again. Yeah. Have a good night. Easy. Thank you so much. All right, much. take care. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Wow. Well, that was, woo, that was Another fantastic. Another one, right? Oh, my yeah. gosh. So I'm wow. telling you, man, awesome. Wow. You, 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 just can't, you just can't beat it. So. Wow. Hey, um, yeah. for every, for, and for, uh, hello, Catherine, for all the help that she's been giving you behind the scenes, right? Yes, really? I yeah, know. Yeah, because she was, she was she was sending me some messages and i'm like i you know what maybe he'll listen to you because i don't even know what i i don't even know what to tell like what how to rectify this and she just got right to it and so the only um, thing i'm working on now is the admins and moderators Okay. So oh, I got to yeah. get that part figure out yes. on youtube yes yeah so so yeah. i did win the appeal and uh Good. so i got that taken care of so awesome. now, okay. now now they can donate on youtube as well awesome awesome so i'm very Great. stoked yeah. about that hello norma so yeah. uh yeah yeah, e -Rev and yeah everybody that's joined us um thank you so much and for your continued support 
for um, yeah. Yang Grizzly one year anniversary. Woohoo! Yeah, I know, exactly. right? One year down and hopefully many years to go. So yep. we're making headways in many countries around the world. So we're getting yeah. there, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So what we got for next week's show? Next week, um, oh, I have to look because I've been scheduling some people just within the last few days. So I'm a little bit, uh, next week is. But make oh, sure Al, we get his Al, books, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, the, it's Al, worth it. Yeah, Alfred uh, San Santageri. The the um the uh, what is he father or the got the he's from New York uh, Bronx. Alfred, I know you know him. Is it the Squatch Father? I'm so sorry, Alfred, that I'm butchering this. But um, yeah, he's he's um, you know what I'm talking about, Chris? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah, he's he he will be um, with us next, and um, yeah. So and he has paranormal, uh, Bigfoot, dogmen, basically everything. So if you if anybody has anything that you want him to talk about, he'll be willing to talk about. So just you know, shoot us a message or whatever. Let us know. We love you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it. So let's go. Thank you. Know. you. Coast to coast, around the world, ladies and gentlemen, we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you. Take care. It's a grizzly. Should we get out of here? No. We're gonna watch and listen. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, ship, should we run? <laughs> no. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, shit. Should we run? <laughs> okay. It's a grizzly. Are you sure it's not Jim Monk? <laughs> No, I'm out of here. <laughs> it's a grizzly. Oh, I'm out of here. Huh? Maybe it is a chipmunk. <gasps> it's a grizzly. Oh, it. Are we gonna die? I don't know. We're just going to sit here and listen and watch. Let's get out of here, maybe. <laughs> Fall! <laughs>